All right, this is Adele and Mike, and we are here with the DJI Matrix 300. Pretty cool setup. We went over it a little bit inside yesterday, and now we're going to put it up in the air. Um, we've got the Inspire 2 broadcasting, a live feed here, so we're going to try to do uh, in-flight live. Mike's firing up the 300. All right, so we got the M300 fired up. We got the Z15 spotlight and the H20T going. Uh, make sure all of our booms are locked, right? Check over props, do the basic pre-flight stuff. Definitely make sure these booms are nice and snug before you're taking off. Uh, the 300 is going to come with a, a single mount camera, but you could add this dual mount on, and it's super easy to install. Four four bolts and a plug. Uh, if you guys remember back at like the M210 days, if you ever wanted to go from dual camera to single on that, it was torture. Little skinny ribbon cable and, and really challenging to swap those over. Uh, nowadays, really easy. Two little plugs in the bottom. Uh, swap over to a dual payload if you want it. And then if you're only flying with one camera, you could calibrate the center of gravity once you're up in the air. So pretty slick setup from DJI for sure. So Have let's... You know, we've done a little bit of the top mount, but not so much. Um, you know, for the most part, just using the dual bottom mount here. But it'll it'll install the same way. Four easy little screws here, and and run your cable down. So, uh, okay, so we're firing it up. Looks like we're getting into the pilot app. You know, another big thing, of course, is updates, right? You always hear about firmware updates. They're they're getting easier. It's not that hard to keep up with that stuff. So. Uh, if something's not running right, you know, that's always your first line of defense. If you're having issues, give us a call. We'll walk you through it. Um, again, DJI is making this stuff easier. Uh, guess I'll hand the iPad back to you and we could try to get this thing in the air. Looks like we're all booted up. Let's see how the compass is looking here. Compass is looking good. We'll check our return to home altitudes just in case we have any issues. You're looking at the uh, Smart Controller Enterprise edition a little different from the 200 yep it's got the uh, battery pack on the back a little wb 37 battery so the old smart controllers just really wouldn't last very long you get a couple hours out of them now you're you're going all day and swap a battery out and keep going uh, the zoom camera is getting better as well they're giving you the ability to touch this quick uh, button on the front here and roll your dial to zoom so if you're running as a single op and you've just got pilot control you could easily control the zoom Again, compared to the Z30, it's, it's leagues above it. Um, if you have a cam op controller, you could also zoom on the joysticks. Really nice, slow, smooth zoom instead of having to, you know, click, click, click on the screen and have it, you know, phase itself in. Uh, so that's been getting pretty good. Spotlight's pretty bright. Uh, I don't see any settings on the main screen for the spotlight. You got to go into your menu settings and you'll see like a little third party payload wheel in there and then you could fire it up from there. And the H20T, the uh, thermal sensor on there, DJI put their own sensor in there. Yep, that's a DJI thermal. It's it's 640 by 512. It, it's taking radiometric JPEG images. Uh, I suspect you could still use FLIR tools for that, but really they're trying to have people use the uh, DJI thermal analysis tool. So then you could you know do everything you need to in post if you didn't get it quite right uh, out in the fields. So that's a pretty slick software. Let's see what else we want to go over. We could throw our, our strobe light on. A little more visibility. We've got the beacon on the top and the bottom now, which is slick. We're getting uh, we're getting red lights all around though. Let's see what that's all about. Let me hand this back to you. Alrighty. Let's see max flight out. We've talked about it before, the 300 has 360 avoidance, that's kind of a new thing as well. Um, that's why the motors are upside down, so you can have that avoidance up top. Um, it's a little bigger footprint than the 200, we had them side by side a couple days ago. Quick reboot. Do a quick reboot on the 300 and put it up in the air. 
How's this looking from uh, the Inspire? See, we have a few viewers, but I don't, I'm not seeing any comments. Common question is how much? Uh, you're around about 12,000 for the drone and uh, goes up from there about 11,000 for the camera, for the thermal. 12,000 for the drone and 11,000 for the thermal H20T camera. Spotlight's 2,500. Uh, you get the new TV60 batteries. Two of those last you about 45 minutes. Sorry, calibration. Mike's got to do a compass calibration and we've got some ice here. <laughs> We're pretty excited about the P1 and L1 payloads as well. Those should be coming out in March. Um, you know, when this first came out, they said the X7 wasn't going to work on it. Uh, X5S, no work with it. So we were wondering, you know, how you're going to map or get the high resolution images from it. And now uh, the P1 is the answer to that. P1 is going to be about $9,000. And then they're also coming out with the LiDAR sensor, the L1. Uh, that one's going to be $18,000. Um, what kind of sensor is in that LiDAR one, L1? I think it's a Livox branded LiDAR. And then the P1 should take the X7 lenses. It's got the DLS mount, so we're thinking the uh, uh, 24, 35, or, or 50 mil should fit just fine. They've got the leaf shutter, so we'll stick to that. Yeah, I'm nice. ready to rock. Turn right. up in the air. Inspire two, inspire up. Let me give you a little bit. We have a little bit of ice here, so we have to take it a little slow. It's nice to see the sun, though. Oh, leg shells over here. <laughs> We're walking on ice. All right, I'm gonna bring the Inspire two take off. up. No, nope, you're looking good. If you want to come in closer to me, I'll make sure we're good there. Okay, we just had, I don't know if you can disable your beeping on the... Uh... Uh, we're going to live with it for now. We're far enough away. Okay. Okay, let me spin this guy around. Let me turn that spotlight on, see how that looks in the day. There's our spotlight. <laughs> and make sure obstacle avoidance start going wonky. That's coming from here, huh? Okay, let me turn. Yeah. Okay, you've got no avoidance. So. How the strobe works, I got uh, a one hertz flash. And then we've got a faster 18 hertz. Looking good. Man, super stable in the air, even without the RTK. So this M300 is RTK ready. Uh, you don't have to purchase it with the RTK. So like in the past, the 210 RTK, you had to get the base station and you couldn't really turn a 210 into an RTK. Uh, this one's ready to go. You know, you could buy it as is. And if you have a need for the RTK base, you add it later on. Um, we get a lot of questions about RTK. You know, it's, it's really more of a, a surveyor and an inspector tool rather than like a public safety tool. You know, if you're out there fighting fires, doing search and rescue, you don't necessarily need it. Uh, it's great to have it, really tight position holds, but it's really more for getting that uh, accuracy when you're taking an image. When you are enabled with RTK, it's gonna sync that data up to the center of the image every time that camera fires. Uh, making it that much more accurate.
Yeah, we're looking at the beautiful Whitefish Mountain out in the distance. We're waiting for some more snow though. It's been a pretty weak year. So we got the Matrice 300 flying around, H20T, Z15, the Wingsland Spotlight. It's doing great. The Spotlight didn't really require any updates or anything. I just threw it on there and it worked. So uh, that's always a good thing. We've got a nice green flash coming from the rear of the front. That's DJI's way of saying, the heads up, the drone's coming right for you. How many spot, uh, how many satellites do you have there? Uh, right now I've got 18 satellites I'm hooked up to. Same as actually the Inspire 2, we're working with about 18. Okay. Um, once you get the RTK going, that certainly goes up quite a bit. I'm gonna turn that spotlight off. You know, another cool thing as I'm going through some of the features here is being able to adjust your obstacle avoidance. You know, certain applications may call for a greater distance of avoidance if you're flying in a, a sketchy spot. You really want to avoid, you know, hitting the ceiling of a bridge or something like that. You may want to adjust your avoidance up a bit. So that's always good. What else we got going on here? Of course, the dual op mode, being able to switch from pilot back to cam op, that's going to be huge for, uh, you know, I think more of a public safety thing, even an inspecting thing. If you're looking at a gas line or a long power line, you could have, you know, somebody maybe two miles downwind. Uh, once you start losing line of sight, he'll take over and start flying. So now you're, you're legal as far as that goes, and you're increasing your, your range by quite a bit. Uh, let's see, we, we started off at like 50% battery. I've got about like 42% now. I've still got 14 minutes left in flight. These TB60s are, are awesome. Hit the sun and it's turning that thermal camera off for me, which is nice. You know, we're not gonna burn out the camera. Uh, it's gonna make it last that much longer. Same for the rangefinder. Now, after the latest updates, you could turn the rangefinder totally off. Uh, you know, kind of keeping that, it's, it's longevity there. Let's see, we could obviously sync up both cameras. You could even run three cameras if you add a top mount uh, and sync them all up. I don't really see a huge reason for three payloads, especially now that the H20T is out. You know, you pair that thing with a spotlight and off you go. Pretty quiet up there. It's almost like, the, I think the Inspire 2 is probably a little bit louder, huh? I think it is, the, yeah. the 300's just got a low hum. Nice, nice torquey machine for sure. It's saying uh, sunburn protection mode, it's speaking in Chinese to me. Okay, another cool feature too, we'll, we'll have to get a screen record of the actual H20 here pretty soon, but you could, uh, you could frame up your zoom camera from the wide camera, so, you know, if you're at full zoom and you're trying to like make small adjustments, it's really hard. So the ability to use the wide camera and have a box on the screen of where the zoom camera will be, frame up your shot, switch over to zoom, and, and that's it. Yeah, that thing is looking good. Super slick machine. Face here, uh, if you've seen this yet, the new first person view interface is you know, there's a lot going on. They take some getting used to, but once you've got 35 and it's kind of cold out, so I'm gonna bring it on in. You could touch down first if you like. Okay, we're blowing the landing pad. I yep, I'm going in the snow as well. All right, guys, we're down. Uh, we'll do a little more of this later this week and next. And uh, yeah, reach out to us with any questions you have about this system. We've been getting a lot of hands-on time with it. Thanks for tuning in.